Thanks Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Welcome here. If you're new here, my name is Bethany. I'm the girl behind Well Love Knits. And today I would love to sit down and just chat with you guys um, about, you know, just life in general, what's been going on with me, share a little bit about what's been on my mind, and hopefully this, what I've been thinking about, the message that I hope to share, whether that's cohesive or not, um, I hope that it resonates with you in some way and we can have a nice discussion about it or you know that it comes at a good time for you encourages you that's what i'm really hoping for today uh, while we also get some rose in on whatever it is we're working on i thought i would cast on something new because why not <laughs> why not work on something different i feel like at this moment i'm really craving something new so I'm going to lean into that instead of forcing myself to work on a project that I'm not necessarily interested in working on. And also it's a little too complex for a knit and chat. I kind of learned my lesson last time. So I've got some scorching hot tea that I cannot touch for quite some time. So I'm just gonna put that aside and let's talk about what I'm planning on casting on today during this chat. So I learned my lesson from the last time I was doing a pattern. I was doing the Hilda Structure sweater and while it worked out in the end, <laughs> um, doing like a regular knit and chat with something that I had never seen before um, and that was charted work, that was a silly thing to do. I was talking about how I wanted a new ranunculus <laughs> and I think I'm going to cast that on today. I have two options. I'm not really sure where I'm going to go with that. But I thought I'd bring both yarns down and show you because, yeah, I just want to get some of these out of my stash and use them for something that I would enjoy. So what a better way than a ranunculus. <laughs> um, so the ranunculus is a pattern that I'm sure we all know, but sometimes I get questions about it. So it is a pattern that is very, very popular over on Ravelry and in the knitting community at large. Um, it is a sweet little t-shirt pattern that can be knit with all kinds of different types of yarn. And today I'm going to try something different because for the two versions that I have knit, I've knit with two strands held together. And I really love the fabric, um, but it is a thicker fabric. And this is definitely meant to be a loose, lacy kind of garment. And I'm trying to like zoom in on the... So here's like an example of one of them knit in, I think this is mohair. So really airy and light, the fabric is flowy. This one, I can't really tell, but it might lean to the version that I'm gonna be working on. This one is kind of pixelated, so you can't really tell. But I'd encourage you to click the link in the description and go over, go over on Ravelry and see those um, projects maybe in a better way on your computer or on your own device. You might be able to see a little bit better than what I'm showing you. So for me, both of my versions have been knit with um, two strands of fingering weight held together. Uh, and 
I really like the fabric that it comes, uh, that is made with it. I feel like that to me, I just like thicker fabrics in general. I feel like it's more substantial and I just have like that nice, it, the two versions that I have are nice and squishy. I did Knitting for Olive for one of them and then Drops Flora and Knitting for Olive held together uh, for one of them. And I like both of those versions, but yeah, they both have the same type of fabric. Um, maybe knitting experience, I also enjoy a thicker fabric. I tend to just enjoy that better or just gravitate towards it. Uh, but this time I'm gonna try just one strand and I know that has been successful for many knitters and it is recommended. It says that you can knit it with lace weight, you can knit it with a light fingering or a worsted weight yarn. So I'm gonna give a try the fingering. Actually, I'm not sure what weight this is technically. So I have two options here that I've kind of been mulling over and haven't yet made a decision about. So I have some black cotton from my stash that I purchased when I was pregnant with Arthur. Uh, and I wanted to make a flowy open knit long sleeve top, I think for a vacation. Did I buy it when I was with pregnant with Arthur or yeah, I did buy it when I was pregnant with Arthur. Actually, I had an idea to knit up cam one of the camisoles by my favorite things knitwear that when it in the summer, when I was pregnant in 2022, she came out with this really thick ribbed camisole and I knit her camisole number two in this yarn. This is from Sostrena Grene. I hope I'm saying that right. I don't know. Uh, it's a really cute like Danish store, Scandinavian like knickknacky store. It has arts and crafts. It has all kinds of stuff. It's a lot of fun to go into. And honestly, you just buy a bunch of things that you really don't need, <laughs> but are very cute and nice. And they do have like a wall of yarn that is very, very um, inexpensive. This was probably like a doll, a Euro 50 for a skein. It's 100% cotton, organic cotton, Oweko Tex certified. And uh, yeah, I I knit it, um, I used this yarn in a nice maroon color for camisole number two. So I picked this up for that other camisole three, four, five, six, I don't know <laughs> what camisole it is. I will leave it linked in the description. Uh, I since have no desire to really knit that because I really don't know what size would work for me. And I don't really know if that's something I'm even interested in postpartum would wanna have. So I do think a nice big flowy ranunculus would be nice though. So change of plans might knit up this yarn. I have quite a few skeins, uh, some of which I tried to do into a project. So then I later decided that I wanted an open knit kind of like really loose gauge, long sleeve top. And I think I started that last year. I don't really know where that project is, but I do know where the unopened skeins are and I still have quite a few to choose from. So I think I would have plenty of yarn to use this for a ranunculus. Otherwise, last year when I went to the US, I picked up some yarn that really can only go for a summer knit. This is linen, it's 100% linen, and it is Shibui Knits Reed Linen. Uh, here, can you see that? It is in the ashed colorway. Uh, I have been told by you all that this has since been discontinued. So I'm very lucky to have gotten my hands on three uh, hanks of this yarn. Yeah, I picked it up in the bargain bin at that uh, needlepoint junction that I had mentioned, uh, that I mentioned whenever I do like a little yarn haul after the US. I do pop into that store when I go over to the US and see what they have. They don't really have much of a selection, but they did have this in like their for sale bin. And I don't really remember what the discount was, but it was a pretty good one. 
which motivated me because I would <laughs> 23 euros for, for this Hank that's 225 meters. I don't know, that seems pretty pricey to me. Uh, so I was happy to have found it. And I thought, you know, normally I don't like knitting with linen or cotton. Um, but since I was in a warm weather place shopping at a, a yarn store, I thought, you know, do as the locals do and get some yarn that's good for warm weather. And I th think that this is probably one of the only projects that I would want to knit it up in too. I had no project in mind for it. I caked it up, not really sure why. I think I just wanted to have a cake so that I was ready to use it. But this has been sitting in my stash since June of last year. so. If there's any time to start working with it, now is the time, I think. <laughs> These are two different options here that I have and I still haven't really made up my mind. I was thinking like after talking through it, I would have a little bit more of an opinion. The likelihood is that both of these are gonna become ranunculus at some point. <laughs> um, I'm leaning more towards the black because of the thickness of this yarn. So this is fingering weight. And this one, it doesn't say, but I'm, it, it's not much thicker, but it is thicker nonetheless. And I'm just really curious how the fabric would look. Yeah, I know, knit a swatch, Bethany. Do I want to? Not really. It's pretty. It's a pretty gray. I think that would be nice to have. Black would also be nice to have. Both of these are very neutral. I also wanted to work with a shade like this <laughs> to kind of balance out the loud colors that I've been having on my needles lately. Uh, I should use the special yarn though, right? I should use this. I mean, otherwise it's just gonna be sitting in my stash and that's just not gonna make me feel good. The cake is kind of a mess though, so let me figure out what we're doing here. I wanna tell you about Squarespace, the all-in-one platform to build an online presence. With Squarespace, you can start a website tailored to your needs with the new guided design system, Squarespace Blueprint. They have professionally curated layouts and styling options that would work well for your brand, and they are optimized for every device. With their integrated SEO tools, you show up more often to more people and grow the way you want. I think Squarespace is a must-use platform if you're selling knitting patterns or even just interested in sharing your hard work. I've been working with them for years and I have no complaints so far. So check out squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, use my code to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. I do a normal, just cast on, long tail cast on. Uh, that's the main modification. So if you've seen my ranunculi, <laughs> the two uh, shirts that I have are more of a tighter neck and I get a lot of questions about how I do that. And it's just, I don't follow the instructions. <laughs> I do a long tail cast on instead of, I think it was a backwards twisted loop something cast on, a uh, double twist loop cast on. Uh, I don't do that. I've never done it. Uh, I've looked up videos on how to do it. I actually did just before casting this one on, thinking that maybe this time I'd give it a go, but uh, can't be bothered. And I actually like the tighter neckline. I don't wanna worry about it being too loose and like falling off the shoulder because I don't think I would appreciate that look. Um, so we're gonna just do, we're gonna just do the, uh, the tried and true. I'm gonna get started. I really hope that I like this fabric I've decided on obviously the Shibui Knits yarn because it's a little bit more of a special yarn. And when it comes to special yarn like that, I'm not really one to want to buy skeins that I find are just so special that I can't use. I wanna buy special yarn and have a purpose for it. And if I don't find a purpose for it, I'm like, why did I buy that? 
I get to like the guilt instead. Like this is not going to get ever get used, is it? <laughs> um, so I like to find that balance between special skeins and almost too special to use. So I'm going to use this yarn. I never knit with linen. I've attempted in the past, but I don't think I've ever successfully finished a project with linen. So this will be a nice one. And I'm hoping that with the three skeins, I have more than enough to, yeah, to have a nice sized ranunculus because my other two versions, what I really, a goal for this one is to be a little bit different from those because those two versions are pretty cropped. The second one, I definitely lengthened a little bit more because I just had more yarn. But the first one, the white one that I have, I really love it, but it's just, it's not gonna be working for me right now or anytime in the future. Like this summer, I highly doubt because it's just so cropped. And I don't really know how I'm gonna feel about that after giving birth. Well, I can tell you that I'm not gonna like it. So unless I find some really nice, comfortable high-waisted jeans, and even then, I'm not really sure. So, uh, yeah, gonna learn my lesson with this one from those two and make it nice and long. Like even longer than the second version. Like I get to a point in sweaters and I wonder if you are the same <laughs> where I get tired, I think of the body and I'm, it, there's a discussion of how cropped is too cropped, you know? Uh, but it usually comes to me from a point where I'm just tired of working on the project and I would just like to cast off now. Thank you. <laughs> um, so I don't really, and I do usually like the cropped look, but I think I'm kind of moving away from that a little bit and prefer something a little bit longer. And that's just probably because I'm a mom now and, <laughs> you know, styles change and all that. Uh, but I am noticing that some of the sweaters that I have made in the past just don't really fit my lifestyle anymore, mainly because they're much more cropped than I would choose at this stage of my life. And that's okay. We just need to knit more sweaters <laughs> and learn from that and adjust, which is why I've been sizing up on some of my sweaters, sweater projects recently, just to make sure I have enough room, you know, because you don't want to knit something and then it not work for you. Like, what's the point of all that time and effort? I got some of these really nice nylon coated steel stitch markers. They come in really nice colors and I know it says to keep away from children, but Arthur loves this thing. He doesn't know how to open it, so I'm comfortable giving it to him and he uses it as like a little maraca. <laughs> he likes that sound. <laughs> Okay, so I'm gonna place my stitch marker on and we're in business. Where to begin? We've been having quite um, the time, an eventful past couple of weeks. Um, and I don't normally talk, when I do like knit and chat and stuff, I do talk about my personal life, but I don't really like to dive into it, you know, so, so much. Um, mainly because I just want to keep this channel lighthearted and, you know, about knitting. That's kind of, it's the, that's, that's the topic of this channel. So I want to keep it that way. I do like to share obviously with my pregnancy and things from time to time, but I do like to think that I'm keeping it pretty private over here. Um, but even still with the events that have happened in the last couple weeks, Oh, come on. I thought that it would be interesting to share because it, it, it kind of sparked something in my mind that I thought, I don't know, might be beneficial to kind of just talk through. And maybe other people might relate to it or it might be a message that others will find nice and encouraging and yeah. That's where, that's the background of this. So basically life has been, has been throwing a lot of curveballs at our family recently. Uh, so I am 37 weeks pregnant and Arthur, the playground, fell and fractured his leg. 
So he is 20 months. So at about a year, Arthur had learned how to walk on his own and yeah, take his uh, first steps. And he has gotten so good. He is such a coordinated little kid. Uh, and we were really impressed with his ball kicking skills. Like he can dribble a football, soccer ball really well, which I was impressed with. I don't know. I, I don't know anything about baby milestones really. And what I should be looking out for if my, during the pediatrician visits, if everything's good with him, then everything's good with me. <laughs> you know, like I don't really have many worries about where he's at right now. I'm trying to keep it pretty relaxed. Uh, so I thought that for his age, he was quite, oh my gosh, look at this. Oh, this is gonna be a disaster. I thought for his age, he was quite advanced or in the uh, mobility department. And yeah, he's just very independent, uh, loves to do things by himself, go upstairs, climb, uh, do all kinds of things. And for the most part, I am pretty relaxed. Of course, like supervising him is really important. Uh, and we do that, but we also want him to feel like he can do things on his own and it's just a balance trying to juggle that all that to say the worst thing that we could possibly have imagined happened and accidents do happen and he fell and he uh, fractured his leg which you know being 37 weeks pregnant and my son is like 30 pounds or something <laughs> that is a disaster um i'm a stay-at-home mom my husband works uh that is a lot for to have happened to us this late in pregnancy. So, and he's gonna have to have the cast on. We're waiting for him to get a permanent cast, but he's gonna probably have to have that on for like four weeks. So really up until the second baby is born, he's gonna need a cast. He's gonna be so much more reliant on me than he ever was before. We had gotten to a point where it was so nice how independent he was playing, how he could, yeah, go and find some things in this area, in this room here. It is baby-proofed enough for him to, you know, walk around, open things up, do whatever he wants, and I can be in the kitchen behind a baby gate, and I know that he's safe. Um, and all of that came crashing down, not to be dramatic, but it is kind of, it, it's a huge turn. It's a dramatic change from what it was before. And if you think about it, you know, it couldn't have come at a worse time. It was probably one of the worst things that could happen right now because when you're late in pregnancy, you there's so many restrictions on what you can do uh, physically. I mean, of... <laughs> I'm going to be honest, I was not exercising throughout my pregnancy, so I really don't have the stamina to be lifting. I was lifting Arthur, so I guess that does count as exercise, but at the stage I'm at now, it's going to it's really difficult and it's it's really it's when I tell my doctor, I haven't seen her yet, but when I tell her that this all happened, I'm sure she's going to tell me that I can't be picking him up and that I need to find some help. <laughs> which we are lucky to have help, but even still, it's not all the time. We have our own house. Um, help is not right next door, you know? So uh, we have to maneuver that. So we've had to get a little bit more creative than normal uh, now and until the second baby is born. It's interesting how calm I have felt about it and there are times at first when it happened, it wasn't, it was just something that I had to work through. It was a problem that I needed to solve and I was not like letting emotions get in the way. And I was trying really hard to just compartmentalize that and yeah, get, do what needed to be done for Arthur. And that was the most important thing and everything else can just wait. And so then after, <laughs> You know, after the dust settled, I was uh, kind of reflecting and I was thinking to myself, you know, why us? Like, why did this have to happen? Uh, what, like, of course, this just makes everything more difficult. 
And all of those thoughts like, why me? Why us? What I've been trying to remind myself is with some things, you just need to take them as they go. That's what I was trying to do at first. Um, but then when you're not in crisis mode anymore, your thoughts can creep in and kind of, yeah, intrusive thoughts. Maybe you don't even mean to think them, but you think them nonetheless. And letting go of the control over a situation has been, yeah, something that I've really needed to do with this because otherwise I'm just going to make myself miserable thinking about, um, oh, if only life were this way. Well, that's not how life works. Uh, things happen in life and you need to adjust and pivot. <laughs> That's what we kept saying. My husband and I were like, okay, and now we need to pivot. <laughs> I went from having a toddler that was very independent to now I have a toddler that can't walk anymore on his own. He's not going to be able to walk for the next month. Um, and that's going to get in the way of my resting. That's going to make a much more stressful situation before the baby actually gets here. I won't be able to let Arthur out of my sight, really, because he's trying to stand up on his foot. He doesn't understand, even if it hurts him, he doesn't understand that, you know, he can't do that. We're trying to explain to him, like, you know, you need to sit down, you need to be gentle with your foot, help him rest. Uh, we've encouraged, we've got new things for him to play with, to encourage more gentle play, less active play, but these all come with challenges. I mean, he's a toddler who's gonna have a lot of energy, unspent energy, because he can't be as physical as he is used to and as he needs. It's hard on my body, it's hard on my mind, but you know what? I actually have a choice on how it makes me feel. And that choice is really, really key to how I face everything else in the day. And I just wanted to share that with you because I, I think that sometimes we all have that really hard choice and we don't necessarily make the right choice or we make the choice that makes it harder for us where we sit and we stew over things that could be, things that have happened. And that just makes us more miserable instead of just continuing on, like going from one thing to the next, focusing on what needs to be done next. I think it's important to reflect and to be able to feel those emotions. I'm not saying that you shouldn't, and I'm not saying that I didn't. I definitely cried. <laughs> I definitely felt frustrated. Um, but I think putting on a face, a brave face for myself, fake it till you make it kind of thing, it not only helped me, it helped my son, it helped my husband. Those were things that it just helped the mood of our household, even though this really tough thing happened. Changing my mentality or encouraging myself to find a positive mentality was really, really beneficial for us to kind of move past it and just take everything as it comes, you know? Uh, and things continue to come and stack up and, you know, we're with this incident, more things have been proven difficult we don't always get the easy thing in life. And that's just something that I was reminded of recently and I wanted to share that with you. And I hope that this encourages you for whatever it is that you're going on, that, that you're experiencing in life, whatever's going on in your life, I hope that you are taking it as best as you can and trying to brush off what you can let yourself feel the emotions and let yourself feel disappointed with whatever might have happened, but don't let it consume you because if you let it consume you, you're just going to make it more difficult on yourself. And I think having that positive mindset, if you force yourself into it, good things will come. Good things will come eventually. This is looking a little bit like ramen noodles right now. <laughs> Hmm, I probably should have followed the recommendation of the um, pattern and did five millimeter instead of six. But I put the six needles on the cord and just went with it <laughs> at my own peril, I suppose. I really am a firm believer in mind over matter. 
and that you can convince your mind to feel a certain way about something and change your perspective so that your mind, your body reacts to a situation in a particular way. Um, and I think that's just what I'm trying to encourage with this message, with this story, is really just that you have more power than you think over, over, over life and what happens in life. And it's all about your mentality, your attitude, and how you choose to respond to a situation and how that will affect you. Um, and in practice, in theory, it sounds great. In practice, it's more difficult. Uh, again, I really don't want to say that I'm not having any problems with this at all. It's a very tough situation. And I am mourning over the fact that I don't get as much free time. I have to... Uh, before the baby, I have to be more cautious and like hover over Arthur a little bit more than I've been used to. And that before, it's making me appreciate before how independent he was, sorry, and how much of a luxury it is to have an independent baby who is confident in himself to do many things um, and to have all of that change is frustrating, but then to have all of that change when my life is about to change even more, that adds to the frustration, obviously. So I think just for my own benefit, trying to shape my reaction and what I dwell on, um, preventing myself from really dwelling on the fact that I can't do X, Y, and Z anymore, um, that's really helping me get through this and uh, yeah, I'm going to be tired. <laughs> I'm leaning on help a little bit more and acknowledging in myself that asking for help and accepting help is a little bit more difficult for me and that I like to do things on my own and I like to do things my way. <laughs> but uh, letting go of that, I think, has been like this has definitely forced me to do that. And I think that's really healthy for me and trying to find like the positive spin on it in some way. It's a terrible thing to have happened, but there can be positive lessons, positive outcomes from anything that's not so great. There can be some great things coming from it too. So that's what I'm learning. <laughs> that's what I'm reflecting on. That was on my mind this week. So I wanted to share that with you. I'm going to be honest related to knitting. Knitting has definitely been a good way to kind of get my mind off of things. Uh... <laughs> Um, but again, yeah, kind of similar to what I was sharing in previous videos with the stage of pregnancy that I'm in. I'm also just prioritizing sleep and not getting a lot of rose in on what it is that I have on my needles. And I'm going to be honest with you with this one. I'm not really sure <laughs> about its future. <laughs> just looks so silly. Um... Yeah, I'm not sure about this one's future. I'm gonna keep going with it and see because after a couple of rows, the first couple of rows are always a little questionable and then it starts to get a little bit better with the ranunculus especially. I also did the six millimeter needle because I was thinking that maybe that would loosen up the, the neckline a little bit more, you know, um, as compared to, because I didn't follow the the instructions and do the cast on that was recommended. I was thinking, okay, well, this might help me with my long tail cast on. And I think it has in a way, but I just think that the gauge maybe for the twisted rib is a little too open. I just think in general with one strand, I'm so not used to this kind of fabric that it's, I'm gonna have to try and force myself to knit through and see how I feel about it. Again, yeah, I know. Could have knit a swatch, but I didn't. <laughs> so maybe in the end, it would have been smarter to cast on with the black. So if I do another podcast episode, which I really hope that I do, um, it will you will find out <laughs> how this project went and if it's a keeper or not. I'm going to put this aside, maybe work on it later this evening. Uh, for now, I have some other things on my to-do list that I'm, since I'm Arthur free today, uh, the grandparents are watching him. So uh, we have to do some nesting baby related pre preparation items <laughs> to 
<laughs> no, it's not really baby related actually. It's house related, you know. Gotta organize my basement, do some unfun chores, um, but you know, they have to get done. So I'm gonna go do that. Thank you guys for sitting down and chatting with me. I enjoyed spending this time with you, even though the topic wasn't so uh, uplifting. Well, I think it was uplifting. That's what I was trying to do. I was trying to take a bad situation and try and make it more of an uplifting moral of the story. So I hope that that came through. I'm not necessarily a motivational speaker. So I hope that, I hope that the, the, mission of my story, the purpose of this video, I hope it shines through. Um, and if you need encouragement, definitely share in the comments, you know, if you've been through something uh, that you're, or you're working through something, you know, you're not alone. And uh, we all have things amid. on the surface, social media, nobody knows what's really going on on a day to day. I think this is just like such a cliche, but we only show, the best parts of ourself on social media, which is very true. But I think there is like a trend where you're showing purposefully the stuff that's not so great too, to be a little bit more relatable. And I hope that this was relatable and that you got something out of it. There you go. Now I'm gonna start talking in circles. So I'm going to say goodbye. Thank you again for being here. If you like this video, definitely give it a like. It helps me out. Maybe subscribe if you wanna stick around for more content like this and I will see you in the next one. Bye.